Hello, it's Chris from My Stamp Lady here, and I'm here with the Bubble Over Bundle and this fun top fold card. So this set is in the occasions catalog right now, and the soda bottles are super popular in the crafting world. So it's fun to work with this bundle. You have two different sizes of bottles, a smaller and a large one. You also have some sentiments and the labels along the side here. They coordinate with this bottle die set which has a bottle which is kind of ready to go for the small and the large bottles. I'm also coordinating it with a the Bubbles and Fizz designer series paper from the Celebration catalog. So this is a special limited offer through March 31st and you can only get these papers free with a purchase. So if you want to know more about Celebration and how you can get these fun papers be sure to go to my website mystamplady.com. Okay, so here are the papers that I'm going to be using to create this card. And you can find all of the sizes of the different papers on my website under this post, um, mystamplady.com. So I'm starting with the background paper and I'm going to bring in my spritzing box to catch my any kind of overspray. And in my spritzer, I have a high concentrated rubbing alcohol mixed with lemon lime, twist ink refill and I'm just going to spritz my paper and the reason I'm spritzing it is because I want a soft background. You can see that I got a little more of my ink concentrated there in the center and I did that on purpose. I like the variation in color that gives. Now I'm just out of Whisper White cutting a large and a small soda bottle with the Big Shot and I am going to use a sponge brayer and my ink pad and this is crushed curry to just color these bottles and I've covered the top of the bottles with a post-it note so that the ink doesn't go all the way to the top I want to leave a little bit of space like a soda bottle would have and you can see there how I have the top of my bottle and I will also have a cap the cap is going to coordinate in color to the bottles so I'm going to do the same thing with my second bottle but with Calypso Coral this time so I have covered the top of that bottle so that I don't ink it all the way to the top and just sponged over the Calypso Coral and then this will have that same little space at the top and that the crushed curry bottle has so there are my soda bottles Next, I am stamping my bubbles. So I'm stamping the bubbles in crushed curry onto this, just this piece of Whisper White cardstock. And then I'm going to die cut those with the coordinating bubble die. And it lines up when you find the right direction, it will line up with your bubbles. So I have a piece of Calypso Coral and crushed curry. And there are two bottle caps so that you can cut out in one swipe more than one cap. But there's two small bottle caps and there are two large bottle caps. I need a small Calypso Coral. I'm sorry, a small crushed curry and a large Calypso Coral. And they're pretty close in size. So you got to look carefully at which one is which. Okay, I've run those through the big shot. And now I'm going to just with... Um, a uh, fine tip glue pen. I'm going to put these bubbles onto my silicone sheet and on the silicone sheet that by using the silicone sheet I will not worry about any of my glue that might go over the edge sticking to it. So I'm just going to go over. I want them to have a little bit of a shine to them like a bubble would have. So you can use the fine tip glue that way. You just puddle a little more of the glue onto it and it's going to have a nice shine when it's done. It does take a little bit longer, not super long, but a little bit longer to dry. So I have done some ahead of time so that we don't have to wait for the drying time for these particular bubbles. So I set those aside and did these ones earlier. And I'm not sure if you can see in with the camera if it can catch the, the bubble. So I'll set those aside. Let's glue the little tops of the caps down. The little caps that coordinate in color, they make the bottles look so cute. I really like just that little addition to it. You could also do a shiny cap with silver foil, but I just did the same color here. 
Okay, I've brought in a 3 quarters inch and a 1 inch circle punch. I'm going to use the 3 quarters inch punch to punch out one of these little heart circles to go onto the smaller bottle. And then I will punch with the 1 inch punch from the other designer series paper piece a 1 inch circle just to embellish the larger bottle. So it's just simple as that. I've used the paper to go on there. You could create a label if you wanted, but I just decided to add a little bit of designer series paper to those bottles. And they just get glued right on to the coordinate, um, coordinating bottles that you want to put them on. And that's all I'm doing for the bottles for right now. So we can set those aside. Now I brought back in that background and you can see that my spritz paper has dried and I have that little darker area across the center there and I noticed I had a little bit of a run down the left side so I switched that over to the left side so that it would get covered by my designer series paper but uh, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted some variation in that paper. I didn't want it a solid color, but yet soft. And so I glue that right down onto the card front and I'm using my fast fuse to do that. Super sticky fast fuse. I do like it. It does have a learning curve though. You want to make sure you do that little check mark. Otherwise you get little strings that come off, but it's a very, very strong adhesive and I really like that it holds well. So then I'm just putting down the piece or the strip of designer series paper from that same set and placement of my bottles. And everything so far has gone down just flat. And all I can figure is I must have some glue left on my fingers because these bottles keep wanting to stick to my fingers. So I have to take care of that. You know, you got to watch that kind of stuff once in a while or else you have things go where you don't plan for them to go. And getting glue on your fingers is kind of one of the things that happens to crafters. Okay, so now I'm going to put down the little bubbles. I'm just laying them out where I want them, deciding the placement across the um, upper right side. And then I'll bring in my fine tip glue pen and just put down little spots of glue where I want these bubbles to go and then set the bubbles right back in the little spot of glue. But I really liked how these bubbles kind of carried the eye up to the right and brought your eye up where I don't really have anything on this card front. And then just kind of completes the whole front part of this card. So just place those bubbles down onto the glue. And then I can do my sentiment because I have most of that card front done now. Now this is a piece of three quarters inch by, oh, you know, it's a little bit bigger than three inches, Whisper White cardstock. And what I did is I stamped the, the sentiment right in the center and left it a little bit wide or longer on each end. And I'm bringing in the everyday label punch. And what I want is that little design that's on the edge of the punch cut out of the sides. You can see that my paper is way narrower than the punch, but this allows me to get that edge on the end. So I just, what I'm doing is sliding it in through where it is meant to slide the paper in from the front, but I'm going in through the top, sliding that paper through, lining it up from top to bottom so that that little curved area will be centered on my three quarters inch cardstock. And I'm cutting that cardstock so you can see where I'd use those little edges. Be sure to look at the picture more closely to see how I did those edges and what they look like. Now I've taken a Bermuda Bay marker, the one of the blends, the alcohol markers, and I've colored two of the medium sized rhinestones or the little bit larger sized rhinestones. And I'm going to let that dry. And while that's drying, I have a length of the crushed curry solid twine. I do like the solid colors of twine. I find myself grabbing those more and more often and using them. I like them because they're not as thick as a ribbon and they add interest to the card front. And also this is a really casual card. So I like that the ribbon isn't as formal or as fancy. So the twine works really well with that. And this is found in the occasions catalog. All of the supplies are listed on the blog post and you can just click on them and it'll bring you right to those supplies in my online store. 
Okay, a few dimensionals on the back of this sentiment. I want this to pop up a little bit from the card front. And so I've placed that down right on the card front there above the knot or the bow, but over to the right and just over the top seam of where that designer series paper goes. Those rhinestones have dried. And so I'm just adding those on each end, kind of like, um, you know, a pin or something that would hold that label on. So I've taken a little strip of designer series paper and I put it onto a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of whisper white cardstock. And then I will mount that right on the inside. And that designer series paper kind of brings the card front to the inside by carrying those colors over. And I really like that. It's an easy way to get a little bit of color on the inside of your card without doing a whole lot. You could also stamp some of the image on the inside, but it's a fun way to bring that color inside. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me, chris at mystamplady.com, and you can find the supplies in my online store at shopwithmystamplady.com. Go to my blog, mystamplady.com, to find all of the supplies used, and I also have all the dimensions listed for this card. Thank you so much for watching.